Excel. You get your data, chart it, graph it, and hit trend line. But what are we missing? What are the concepts that can only be learned from graphing by hand? One of the most important skills you can learn in a science class is drawing a best fit line. What usually happens is you take two related variables and graph how one is a function of the other. For example, mass versus weight. <laughs> it's really handy to use this best fit line ruler because it helps you draw a line between the points you plotted. There. The slope is 10 newtons per kilogram. A proper best fit line will have the same amount of points above the line as below the line. This is not a lesson that's easily learned by graphing with Excel. One of the first activities I like to do with my physics students is to plot Celsius versus Fahrenheit on the XY plane. This helps the students relate the important temperatures like freezing, boiling, and the human body temperature, and to train them to draw best fit lines. Since they're graphing by hand, it's guaranteed that there will be some error in plotting the points. However, this best fit line will not be messed up, particularly when you use this tool. y equals mx plus b becomes Fahrenheit equals 9 fifths Celsius plus 32. Ha! The y-intercept. Take a look at this. Different length pendulums have different periods, but the period versus length is not a straight line. It's a square root curve. One of the most important skills that accompanies best fit line drawing is knowing how to get these uneven powers to come out straight. If you square the period and graph it versus the length, you'll see that indeed it is a straight line, which is an experiment I advise you do. Perhaps the most famous best fit line of all time is the Kepler relationship between the orbital period and the distance from the sun to the planets, t squared over r cubed. Another famous time when the best fit line came in handy was Hubble's relationship between the distance and the speed of galaxies. The further away a galaxy is, the faster it's moving. This is actually a linear fit. No squaring required. Check it out. It's time to pump up my bike tire. Every time I do, the pressure goes up, up, up. So we can expect a linear relationship between the number of pumps and the pressure. And that's what we get. Now, the reading that you're going to see on the pump is called gauge pressure, which you're going to have to add the atmospheric pressure of about 14 or 15 psi's to. This also adds to the number of pumps, but the slope is always the same. One more gas law experiment can be done with this piston chamber. As I increase the volume, the pressure goes down. It's an inverse relationship. How do you graph that with a straight line? Answer? You just graph the inverse of the volume. As the inverse of the volume goes up, the pressure goes up. <laughs> You can see that the fact that it is clear helps enormously, especially when it comes to scattered distributions. This can be useful in science as well as statistics, and it might even convince your students to abandon their obsession with connecting dots.